<clears throat> All right, for page seven, um, the first question, question nine, is just to do with um, confidence intervals. And um, question 10 is just your standard name that scenario question. So for nine, a catalog sales company promises to deliver orders placed on the internet within three days. Follow-up calls to a large random sample of recent customers gave a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all orders that arrive on time to be 82% to 92%. What is the proportion of sampled orders that arrive on time? So the formula for your margin or for your confidence interval is p hat plus or minus your margin of error. So since your formula is p hat plus or minus the margin of error, your proportion of sample orders is just the midpoint between 82% and 92%. So 87%. All right. B, what's the margin of error? So again, referring back to your formula for a confidence interval, you have 87% plus or minus your margin of error. And so you know that your lower bound is 82% and your upper bound is 92%. So 87% minus 5% gives you 82%. And 87% plus 5% gives you 92%. So your final answer is 5%. And another way you can do this is just... 82 minus 92 divided by 2, which is also 5. All right, so next. So for C, the researcher felt that the confidence interval was too wide to provide a precise estimate. What could the researcher do to produce a narrower confidence interval? So if you go to your formulas for confidence intervals, The way to narrow your confidence interval is to decrease your standard error. And since for both general and um, conservative, you calculate um, that by dividing by your um, sample size, then if you increase your sample size, then your margin of error would decrease and your confidence interval would be narrower. So the way to make your confidence interval more narrower is to increase your sample size. All right. So for question 10, um, name that scenario. It's just giving you a list of scenarios, asking you to determine if it's confidence interval or hypothesis test, and then state the parameter of interest. So for A, police set up an auto checkpoint at which drivers are stopped and their cards are inspected for safety problems. They want to estimate the percentage of all cars on the road that may be unsafe. So since you're just estimating the percentage and you're not testing a statement, it's a confidence interval. And your parameter of interest is the percentage of all cars on the road that may be unsafe. So just your P. All right, population proportion P. All right, so for B, a company has recently started an exercise break program for its workers to see if it will improve job satisfaction on average as measured by a questionnaire with higher scores indicating more satisfied. Scores for 10 randomly selected workers before and after the implementation of the exercise program were recorded. So since the company wants to see to test the statement that the exercise break in program will improve job satisfaction on average, since you're testing something, it's a hypothesis test. And since you're taking scores for 10 randomly selected workers before and after the implementation of the exercise program, you're taking two measurements for one worker, so each measurement is paired, so the test is a paired t-test. 
and your parameter of interest is mu d. So your population mean difference. And then finally, C, researcher Kalinda would like to determine if the proportion of all adults favoring the death penalty is the higher than that for all teenagers. She asked a random sample of adults whether or not they favor the death penalty. She also asked an independent random sample of teens whether or not they favor the death penalty. So since you're determining if the proportion of all adults favoring the death penalty is higher than that for teenagers, so you're testing a statement, it's a hypothesis test, and since your sample of adults, group one, and your sample of teens, group two, are not matched together, so you're just taking a random sample of adults and then separately a random sample of teens, there's no matching, so it's just a um, two-population proportion test. So your parameter of interest is P1 minus P2. And the reason why it's proportion instead of mean is because she's determining if the proportion of all adults favoring the death penalty is higher than that for all teenagers. All right, and that concludes page 